Now, straight away, you can see there's two executables there. Um, I don't know what this one does. I haven't run that one because, as I say, I haven't looked into BLFS yet. Um, but the JHA ALFS, you'd think that would be the script to, or the program to get it going. In fact, it's not. If you try to run that, it does actually tell you what to do. Um, that it can't be called directly. The only thing you can do with that file is to view the version information, which you can see the most recent version at the time of this recording is the 7th of March, 2023. And who's on the team um, maintaining this, this project. And it also tells you that to start the tool, you need to run make. So everything's contained within, within the make file to get this going. You can also see there's a readme file there, readme for the BLFS. You can customize the configuration in some or, or the uh, way the tool operates in some way. There's a cheat sheet there with a couple of examples of how to run it. Um, I haven't actually looked at the function list actually. I imagine that's what functions are available in the in the script. Um, I've not had too much of a look around elsewhere. I've uh, just really been interested in getting it going. So let's run make and start the configuration. So you get this menuing system a bit like the menuing system for make config when we're configuring the kernel. And basically all you do is just go through each of these options and set the parameters that you want to set to um, configure the automation. So if we start with book settings, by default it uses Linux from scratch system V book but you've also got the system D version or you can switch it to the beyond Linux from scratch it also says see help um, so it says oh, it installs tools to build the BLFS packages so I'm going to stick with system V the most basic version the book version so here we can uh, specify a particular branch I'm not sure what the working copy is exactly Oh, it's a local working copy of the book, so you could have already downloaded the XML files for the manual um, and specify the location after that. Yeah, the location there. So I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to be fetching it from the um, internet and you specify what you want to download here. So as you saw in the browser, the Git browser that trunks the most recent development version. I want to stick with the uh, most recent stable version. Um, sometimes development may break uh, because it's a development version. So if you're trying this for the first time, it might be best to stick to a stable version to ensure that any breakages aren't down to the actual LFS release. Multilib, you probably want to leave that on standard. It just builds for the architecture that you're uh, running JHALFS on, uh, but as you can see, there's other options there. I'm not even sure if these are valid. I presume they are. If these are valid options now, if you are building um, Linux from scratch, but anyway, the options are there. I haven't tried them to to confidently say whether they will work or not. Build method true. I don't know why there's a boot option or what it does. Um, but the LFS book uses truth, so I've just stuck with that. And then there's a couple of extra options here, which are obviously advanced, BLF, BLFS and custom tools. I think it's to extend the functionality of the um, uh, JHA LFS, the custom tools part. So I've just left those blank. So I just press escape to go back to the top menu, go into general settings. And this is where we set the directory where the root of the new LFS system will be. So normally this would be forward slash MNT forward slash LFS. As I said, I'm going to be storing everything that I do in this ALFS directory I've created. So that's under my home directory. And I'm going to store the first iteration of my um, automated LFS build under LFS01. So that's where the root system, the root directory of the created LFS system will be under that directory. Retrieve source files. Yes, I need to because 
um, I've deleted one to for demonstration purposes um, but otherwise I could leave that blank because I have got the current versions available it's a stable um, version so they should never change if it was on development you probably want to leave that checked because obviously as LFS is developed new versions are added um, you'd want to fetch that version otherwise the automation would fail so I'll press spacebar to um, enable that it now wants the package archive directory so this is that source archive directory that I said I created and showed that I created so what I'm going to do is just put in the location for that so that's home kernel text forward slash ALFS forward slash source archive um, you'll note that I'm not using the squiggle the tilde as a replacement for home kernel text um, I haven't tried it but usually scripts don't always expand um, that short form into the home directory so rather than take a risk I'm just putting in the full path to the home directory um, the other connection attempt for failures and timeout didn't change any of them uh, the FTP mirror now I'm not sure when this is used I don't know if it says here does it oh yes it is yeah this is what I suspected actually it um, when the packages are downloaded they're actually downloaded from the um, source uh, website so for example the Linux kernel is downloaded from kernel.org and so on um, so as it says here this is a mirror to download packages and patches if they're not found in source ar archive occasionally updates are made to versions and old versions are removed so this would allow you to specify a mirror uh, to, to fetch an older version if it, if it had got removed from its um, home page um, the only thing I would change here possibly is to, well, I'd, I'd certainly, if I press enter there, certainly put an S in so it's using a secure connection. And I guess really I should go to the Linux from Scratch web page to find out a mirror that's closer to me. I believe this is in, this is Oregon State University um, FTP repository. So I suppose really I should change that to somewhere closer. Um, but uh, I'll leave that for now as it's only one package that I envisage that's going to be downloaded and it should should be able to download itself from uh, its source rather than a mirror. Uh, the run make file, the, the actual build is executed through a make file that's generated by this tool, JHALFS. Uh, you probably don't want to check that um, after the configuration because although you do get a chance to review the configuration changes, you might want to make some changes and indeed I've still got to create that config file for the Linux uh, compilation uh, uh, before I actually run the automation. Rebuild files, I can't do that at the moment because there's nothing to rebuild. This is the first time the configuration has been run. But if you do make any changes, then that needs to be checked. Um, it would be nice if it could detect any changes, a bit like Make does, uh, rather than to have that as a separate option. But then I guess you might want to make some changes and not actually reflect that in the conf uh, in the final automation at some point so i can kind of understand why that, that's optional so let's move on to build settings so there's an option here for test suites you can run the test suites for each of the packages it does extend the time quite a lot as you might um, guess or or know even um, from doing Linux from scratch by hand. Uh, in my own tests, it took just about two hours to run the complete build with uh, all tests enabled. So that's all the tests executed in chapter eight. Um, I will just show you that if you do opt to run the test, you have the option to run only the critical test suite. So that's all the tool chain plus the things like GMP, uh, MPFR, and so on um, or all the final system test suite so that's everything in chapter 8 basically the final system um, and that's the option I took where I got a two hour build time I imagine with the critical my build time would probably be more like 
I guess maybe an hour and a quarter, maybe, uh, as a guess. Um, so as I say, I'm not going to enable that. I'm just going to do a flat build. Um, as I say, it would take about 40 minutes to run. Uh, package management, I've not looked into that. Um, there's some information there about it. So if you're interested in some form package management, that might be worth a look at. Create a log of installed files for each package. Well, yeah, that could be useful. Um, had I not had that enabled, I wouldn't have known that the Linux kernel was sitting there waiting for an input from um, the standard in. Um, after it's asked me a question, um, I was able to go onto another terminal and tell the end of that log and could see that that's, that's what had happened. So that's probably quite advisable to have that enabled all the time. Um, strip install binary stroke libraries. Well, the book does that or gives you the option to do that. And normally it's a good thing. It reduces the size of the binaries. Um, and if you're going to be creating multiple uh, LFS versions, it'll be a good idea. Obviously, if you're into debugging, then you don't want to do that because as far as I understand, stripping will remove debugging information. In fact, I believe that's what gets stripped. Um, so I'm going to check that because I, I wouldn't know what I was doing there anyway. Remove the libtool.la files. That's normally a good idea. The, those files can cause problems, I believe, in BLFS. I've, I've seen it myself where a package won't compile for some reason you do a clean up there's a little script that's in the blfs book you do a clean up of all the la files that have been installed and somehow magically and i don't know why i don't understand it but the build starts again once those la files have been removed there's an option there to not display the progress bar so by default it's displayed I guess if you're on a slow terminal maybe over serial interface or maybe if your host is particularly slow um, it would obviously um, take some of the proportionately more of the CPU time um, on a slower machine than it would do on a faster machine. So that might be something to remove. Um, I haven't removed it, so I don't know if uh, you still get a status update as to what package is being built and if it's just the progress bar that gets removed or whether it is a totally silent build and you just have to rely on the logs to monitor it. Um, I would hope that it is just a progress bar that's removed, uh, but so I, haven't, I haven't actually tried that. So system configuration next. This is probably where we do the most editing and this is all about configuring the um, config, the configuration files for the final Linux from scratch system. So in theory, if you didn't want to uh, boot from the system as I'm not doing and you are just doing it purely for the compilation you may be testing something uh, maybe you've turned on some optimization flags you want to try them out um, you probably wouldn't really need this if you're not intending to boot it but um, I'll go through it anyway uh, just just for the sake of it um, custom FS tab file so you can use a, um, a pre made FS tab file to be included in the build. You'd select that there and then obviously specify the location of it. I'm not going to bother with that. Um, build the kernel, I am going to do that. And this is where I need to specify the location of that config file. So once again, it's in home, kernel attacks, ALFS. And if you remember, I called it config-6.1.11. Install non my character n curses. Um, I can't remember if that's actually part of the Linux from scratch build or if it's optional. I can check it and it will install some extra characters. Um, or, you know, leave it unchecked if you know you're not going to use it or need it. Time zone. This is the time zone that uh, you, you find out when you run TZ select during the LFS build. So for me, it's going to be Europe forward slash London. The language that should be should have been obtained from the environment that you're running this this JAH ALFS tool in, uh, and so normally you wouldn't need to change that at all unless you know you want a specific language. 
uh, there may be a slight chance that your current environment has got a language that won't be built or is not available in the uh, glibc system that is going to be built uh, is a slight chance but probably very very unlikely um, so you probably don't really need to change that unless your current language is incorrect and you know you want a specific language there's an option there to install this full set of locales as there's an instruction available in the Linux from scratch manual to do that um, obviously that will add a little bit of time to do that the page size for Groff is default to letter. I guess most people probably want to use A4. Um, host name, again, it's probably not necessary really. Uh, I'm not going to boot it, but I'll stick something in. Once again, network configuration. Well, yeah, it's probably not really necessary again for just um, running through the compilation part of it, but I guess you can. Um, do this e0 um, yeah you can change that maybe to the udev name um, I don't know what mine is on here might be something like EMPS0 in fact I'll have a look at it rather than guess it uh, right EMP7S0 uh, and then the configuration of the IP address is exactly the same as you would do in the network configuration part of the LFS manual. So I'll give an IP address of that. A gateway broadcast address. Domain name local would suffice. I'll use my own mylet.org. Primary server for the DNS. Um, again, I've got my own server, so I'll put that in, or you could use a free one, such as that 888, which is, I think, the Google one. There's other ones, I think. Is it Cloudflare, is it, or some some name? Uh, have free um, DNS servers. Um, I'll just negate that, because that my primary name server will look up secondary servers. Uh, so... That's that. Console configuration. Again, this is probably unnecessary just for compiling, but I might as well change them. They're there if I do want to create a configuration or run a configuration where the settings are correct and I want to boot from it. Change your keyboard. Exactly the same as in the manual. If you've got your hardware clock set to local time, just check that. So if you're sharing the system you're going to build with a Windows system, if you were to boot it, you probably want to set that. Default log level, I normally use three. You're welcome to set whatever log level you want there. And that's it. So go back to the top menu. Um, if we go to advanced features, there's, oh yeah, some information here about uh, an SBU and disk usage report. That could be quite interesting to peruse afterwards uh, to give you ideas of how big the directories are, how much space was used at the end of the build. Um, so I'll leave that one checked. So chapter 5 work, I'm not sure about this one because it says um, save the state of the JHALFS at the end of chapter 5. If you take this item, the whole LFS directory is saved when chapter 5 is finished, it'll be an XZ compressed tarball. Well, as I've seen, when it's run, it's only been a tar file, not been compressed. And also, um, the tarring now for saving the temporary state, I think, is in Chapter 7, as I remember. So I'm not sure if this is incorrect in that it should read Chapter 7, or if it still does um, archive Chapter 5, in which case the archive would probably be useless because it's doing it in the wrong place. But the option's there. I'll set it, and I'll, I'll show you afterwards what it's done. Um, but I've not looked too closely into what it's archived to be able to identify um, exactly what stage it has archived. There's something about comparison analysis where you can compare um, outputs on, on various um, runs. So you could run it you know, one, two or three times, for example, and compare run one with run two and so on. Um, but 
the help for that is quite detailed. It says about an ICA as an analysis tool. So I'm not familiar with ICA. I've not set that. So I've just left that one blank. Um, one you probably want to take a look at on a multi-core machine is this optimization and parallelization. If you press space on that, you get another option come up. Go into that and you can specify the number of make jobs. So on this system, I'll be using 32. And you can select whether to run that optimization on the final system only or in the temporary tools and the final system. For speed, you probably want to run it on the temporary tools as well as the final system. Um, if you select that, because bin utils is going to be run with optimization, there's an op option there to disable just bin utils so you get a real SBU rating, which I've left blank. Um, oh, I've pressed Q there. Let's press C for cancel. Um, so I'll press escape there to go back. There's one final option here for some internal settings. So obviously, until you know exactly what's going on, it's probably best not to touch any of that. So I'll go back to the top menu and that's all done. If you can see down the bottom, there's a few hints on what you can do here. You can press S and then quit or just Q as I just did just now. Do Y to save the config. And it says, do you want to run JHALFS now? Well, yes, we can run it, see what happens. And you can see it's come up saying that the build directory is not a directory. Well, that's because we haven't created it yet. So let's do that now. So I'm going to call it LFS01. Make sure there's no typos. I'll copy and paste that. So we've now got our directory where we're going to store the built system. We've got the tool that's going to generate the automation scripts. We've got a kernel that we we need to create and we've got the source archive directory, which, um, well, for a first run would be unpopulated. Obviously you can see that I've, I've run it before and it is already populated. So in theory, I could create my config file now, but normally because it's unpopulated, I wouldn't have the Linux, uh, source file, source code. So I do need to carry on running JHALFS. So I'll rerun it again by typing make. I'll press Q to quit. And do you want to run it? Yes, we do. Oh, now this is better. It's come up with all the configuration information that we've put in. So you can see it come up with the stuff as it did before. It's checked the requirements for the automation that we're about to run. And as you can see, it's all okay. It's then displayed all the configuration items that we've specified. So you can go through that and just double check everything's as it appears to be, or it should be. Are you happy with these settings? You've got to type in yes specifically. And then gives you a warning about optimizations and it specifies what optimizations you've made. So we've told it to use 32 threads in this case, and it looks like it will look for or use uh, any environment C flags that have been set. So I haven't set them. And that's obviously why they're set to unset. Um, I'm not sure what this bit down here is. I presume you can maybe specify a specific GCC to compile with. Um, I'm not sure about that. That's obviously something advanced. So are you happy with these optimization settings? Yes. And what should happen now is it will go and fetch all the packages as it starts to prepare the automation before we actually run the automation to do the build. So it's fetching the manual at the moment from the repository. It's extracting the commands as you can see. And you can see there it's copied. Right, so if I just scroll back, it's copied the source packages from the source archive directory, except for the one that I deleted, which if you remember was MPC. So as you can see, it says it couldn't find it. It's not in the destination where it expected to be when we run the automation. So it's gone and fetched it. As you can see, it's run wget to save it. So, and it's also specified that it stored it in the package archive for us. So if we go in there, we should see that now. Then it's created some scripts for running each of the chapters. And finally, it's done the equivalent of what we do in the host system requirements. Um, and it's double checked 
all of the tools that are needed to run the build. So if I just list the source archive again, and you can see MPC is now in that directory with today's date and time. As you can see, just, just a minute ago that was downloaded. So it's all prepared. Um, one thing I should have done when I reran JHLF ALFS is I should have updated I should have checked this because what would have happened it would have created the config file with the um, old sorry the config file for the Linux kernel um, with with the old message that I put in there saying to be populated so what I need to do is to run this again with the rebuild the make file after I've recreated that file otherwise it will use the contents of that file it caches the contents of that file so if I save this now so it's ready for next time I can do yes to rerun this if I like um, but what I need to do next is to go into the source the sorry the root of the system we're going to build into the sources and you'll see all the packages are here also I need to extract the Linux kernel source tarball, change into it, make an MR proper as we do in the hard to type and talk at the same time as we do in the Linux from scratch instructions. And then what I'm going to do is make a def config as I'm not going to boot this. I, I don't need to be particular about what settings I've set. So default config will be fine. It's created the config file. So what I'm going to do now is to copy the config file into ALFS and overwrite that config file that I've created in my ALFS directory, but with a, a real config file. And then I'll tidy this up. So now if I go back to my LFS directory, you can see the config file has been updated. It's got the current time. It's also a lot, lot bigger. And I can just quickly view it. And you can see it's a proper kernel config file now. So once again, I need to go back into JH ALFS and run it again. It's got the rebuild make file ticked as I did before so I'll just do Q do I want to rerun it yes I do because I want to update the configuration with that config file happy with these settings yes happy with these settings yes and that's it that's all the configuration done now so we've run JHALFS to configure how we want the build to run we've then quit that configuration and JHA LFS runs some of its own scripts and it's it's not only downloaded the packages that are required it's put them in the correct place and it's also generated all the scripts that are required to do the actual build so all that remains to do now is to go into our root system of the build that we're going to build you can see what it's done here it's not only put the sources directory there with all the packages it's created another JHALFS directory um, but this one's different because this is all the automation for building the system so the other JHALFS that we downloaded from git was the scripts to configure and generate all of these files here 